so the question is, what is the most, um, to me at least, important time or most interesting part of Chinese history that we've learned so far? Well, it's not really the history itself. Well, I mean, of course it's the history. But it's the history and the comparisons that can actually be made with other empires in the West, such as, for instance, the Han and the Roman Empire. Now, if you take a look at the notes, um, the last 150 years in the last of the Roman Empire and the last 100 years of the Han Empire, both nations would be poorly governed, which would then in turn result to the Roman Empire having most of its people resort to Christianity, which at the time was considered blasphemy, because Christianity, if you look at it this way, um, say you're a Christian during that time, you would basically go up and refute everything in the Roman religion or in the Greco-Roman religion. Greco-Roman religion so far, basically saying Zeus, Athena, and all the other gods were pretty much non-existent and that they should be cast out from society. Now, similarly, in the same situation where the people, the government was ruling poorly, the people were feeling mistreated, the large, rich, poor gap was getting even bigger, um, in the Han Empire, the Taiping Jing, which, of, which is otherwise known as the Way of Heavenly Peace, started to be formed with a group, not Christians, but in fact, the Yellow Turbans. Now the Yellow Turbans were also a radical, Christ, um, not Christian, radical religious group that formed in the heat of the government not being able to actually represent its people and actually carry out the will of um, the people's desire, satisfying them like a good ruler should, lead by example and whatnot. So, it's really interesting how both in these exact same situations the people have felt that their government can't help them, their government is out of the loop, they're not really going to get any help from them, and they have to rely on themselves. But when you don't have anything to put faith on, put your faith into, what are you going to do? I mean, of course you're going to automatically resort to finding something new to put your faith, your hard work into. Because most of these people that we're talking about were literate, farmers, the backbone of the country, yes, but not very smart, if you will. So they wanted to go put their knowledge, or not their knowledge, put their skills into something productive that could actually lead them, in, lead them by example, into a new life, which in this instance would be religion. Government mistreated, religion offers all these promises of, oh, if you do all these good deeds, you'll go to heaven. If you follow our commands, you won't go to hell. You don't need your government. The religion is the only way which is very interesting that both of these um, actually occurred during the exact same circumstances. It kind of goes to show that the idea of, I wouldn't really say capitalism, but greed-based power, where it's pretty much complete dominant control over the government, not really representing the people, people have no say, it's kind of just being told what to do, um, can lead to the people feeling mistreated and whatnot, which would then increase the large rich-poor gap, so the poor are getting poor, barely being able to survive, even though the poor are what's actually making the upper class survive, in at least Chinese history, for example. But it's very interesting that when that um, gap starts to increase and the poor feel there's, as though there's no real escape, the only thing they can possibly do is put their faith and belief into something else, something they can actually challenge and, in a sense, force the old government out of power. So both of these had a similar effect. The Christians started massing up their own forces, um, same as the Yellow Turbans. They both wanted the government out. They felt as though they were being mistreated and that there was no real place for them in society. But the thing is, this is where one of the real differences starts to occur. Um, with, all right, let's start with Christianity then. With Christianity, the Christian groups started to form. They were pushing and pushing and pushing to actually have a say because originally, Christians, for their beliefs, were, in a sense, lit in this lampposts, basically. Oh, let's have some fun with this. Light people on fire in the middle of the street, while, of course, um, downturning Christianity again, because, of course, it's going against everything that the Romans and the Greeks believed in. It's sort of the same thing in China. It was the yellow turbans and the way to heavenly peace were pretty much downturning and just downcasting. Um, all of Confucianism. And to the Chinese, um, the Tao, the Way, is very important to them, especially Confucianism. So Emperor Ling felt as though that he could not give this up. 
Constant, um, Constantine, who was the Roman leader at the time, was very, um, how can I put this? He was very distraught with this, I guess you could say, because since the Christian powers were forming, he felt as though there's nothing really he could do against them. He didn't really want to start another conflict, so he decided to join them instead of actually battle them. In joining them, Rome lost all of its culture. Zeus, Athena, um, Persia, not Perseus, what am I saying? Um, and all the other gods like Hades and whatnot were all banished. Their temples were destroyed and in, erected in their place were monasteries, place for Christian worship. There is only one God, there is Jesus, he is the Messiah. And on the other hand, with the yellow turbans, the yellow turbans decided to mount a rebellion, but Emperor Ling, of course, he, as I said before, the Chinese are very, they believe in the way, the Tao, if you will. And with that, they feel as though they don't want to give up Confucianism. Giving up Confucianism is giving up their way to be an actual gentleman, to actually be a scholar in society. So Emperor Ling, instead of doing what Constantine did, joined them, he decided to immediately shut down the yellow turban, send out his armies, and completely wipe them out, which he did. He did, and thus, China's culture was saved, and it's remained the same for however long, which kind of goes to show that, it again goes to prove that China is probably one of the longest last, no, is, sorry, what am I not saying, probably, is the longest lasting empire known to man at the moment. Now, apart from that, if we go into a little bit more detail, or in, into this whole situation, it's, the results are almost, they're pretty much the same, in a sense. They both have their own messiahs, if you will, that would take on human form and walk among them. In the Romans' case, it would be Jesus who, in a sense, spurred Constantine, um, he was the main force that spurred Constantine to actually change um, his views on Christianity. Basically, being killed, being crucified, and whatnot, then coming back three days later, and it's a sign of, oh, he's beyond our power, um, we should totally join Christianity. Now, the exact same thing, well, not the exact same thing, but a peasant called Zhuangzhu, yeah, Zhuangzhu, in Chinese society, decided to, um, was supposedly the embodiment of Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu was what the Taiping Jing and the Yellow Turban thought to be their god, which was also the scholar we read about before in his articles. Um, but they believed that he was walking the earth, and Zhuangzhu was the embodiment, so in a sense he was the messiah for them. And as, like Jesus did, he performed miracles. He went around showing off his power, if you will. I don't really want to say showing off his power because that gives a little bit of a neg negative connotation to it, but in a sense, it kind of showed the people that there was another hope. There was another way to actually... There's, no, there's something else to believe in besides your government. So the... And, but it was a lot... It, just like Christianity, it was a lot more direct, so it didn't offer them really a choice. The unbelievers were punished eternally in hell, um, chambers of purity decided to come. Chambers of purity were erected around chi China to actually get their message across, and that's and then priests perform common rituals. So it's kind of the same concept as Christianity, and with Christianity, it's pretty much the same thing. If you don't believe, God hates you. You're going to go to hell. You need to believe. If you don't believe, you're eventually, as I said before, going to go to hell. Jesus performs miracles. Jesus heals Ill illnesses by casting demons. All of that. Um, goes into the same boat, which is extremely interesting, showing how even though they're from completely different sides of the world, they can actually be extremely similar. Um, humans act the same way when put under the same circumstances. So, poor, like they're being mistreated. I really want to hammer this through, um, or hammer this in, because this is a really key point. Um, Humans, if they feel as though they're being mistreated, they're misled by their government and leaders, they will want to find a new leader. They want to find a new place for them to actually channel what they believe and actually go into how um, to actually be a part of something, if you will. So people want to put their faith in something that they can actually trust. So if something is misleading them, they want to put their faith in someone else. Even today you can realize this with Americans, um, 
putting their faith into like Romney or Obama during the election. People want to channel their faith into a person that they feel best represents them or a thing that best represents them or a thing that they think will be the best for their people, the best for them. So that's probably what I think the best comparison could be and it's an extremely interesting part of Chinese history and it just goes to show that all humans, no matter what walk of life we come from, we will act the same or kind of react the same way when we're put under the same circumstances. So thanks for watching, I guess.